A goodness of fit hypothesis test is to determine whether observations from several different categories might conform to a distribution that is a known distribution. When we're looking at this, we want to make sure that we meet all of the criteria for a goodness of fit hypothesis test. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that we randomly selected items from several different categories. Then the next thing is we need to make sure that we have the expected frequencies to be at least five for each of the categories. And our hypothesis test is to see whether the current distribution of these several different categories conforms to or meets a known distribution. And again, this is called goodness of fit. So let's start by doing an example. For this example, it says that last year the annual bird count at a state park gave the distribution Robins 25%, Finches 13%, Blue Jays 7%, Other 55%. This year, of the 1,330 birds counted, 324 were Robins, 165 were Finches, 100 were Blue Jays, and 741 of them were other varieties. So we have them randomly selected. We have frequency counts for different categories, the robins, the finches, the blue jays, and the other. And for each of these, the expected value is at least five. Now, when we're looking at the rest of the question, it says use the 5% level of significance to test whether the distribution of birds at this park has changed. So here's where I really know that they want me to do a goodness of fit hypothesis test. They give me my hypothesis test level of significance and they want me to determine whether the distribution has changed. So when the wording is like that, it is a goodness of fit sort of question that they're asking you to do. Now, setting up the null and alternate hypotheses for these sorts of questions pretty much has the same sort of wording that goes for each of them. Notice we don't list a parameter specifically that is equal to a specific number or nor do we have uh, the choice for the alternate hypothesis with our inequalities or not equal to. Um, it is the null hypothesis, the distribution of the sample agrees with the population distribution that we had had that we're testing it against is your null hypothesis for each of these goodness of fit questions. And the alternate hypothesis is that it does not agree. So if we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null, then we have to say that the distribution of the sample does agree with the population if we can't reject that. If we can reject the null, then we have sufficient evidence to say that it does not agree. Now, let's look at what we need to do to calculate out the work for this if we're going to do it by hand. We're going to make columns of values that we get from the setup of the problem. Our first column is going to be the observed numerical values for each of the categories. Then we're going to calculate the expected value based on the previous distribution and the number of items that you sampled this time. And then do a calculation of the quantity observed minus expected squared divided by expected. We're going to do that for each of the values. So first for observed, with the robins, they observed that there were 324 were robins. So we're going to go 324 under the observed for the robins. For the ex, um, observed for the finches, we had 165 were observed. For the blue jays, they saw 100 blue jays when they did their sample. And then 741 were other varieties. So those are all our observed. And O is just the first letter observed, so that's what they use for the um, symbols for that to denote it. Now expected. This is to say, what would you have expected to see for each of these categories if it does meet, uh, meet that original distribution? Well, if I had 25% were robins, then I would have expected about 25% of the 1,330 birds that I saw to be robins. So for the expected, I'm going to take my percentage, my 0 0.25, 
in decimal form and multiply it times the total of numbers of birds that were observed. And when we do that multiplication, we get 332.5. Next, what did we expect for the next category, which is the finches? Well, with the finches, 13%. So we would expect 13% of the 1,330 birds to be finches. And when we do that calculation, we get 172.9. Next category is the blue jays. We would expect 7% of them to be blue jays. And when we take 0 0.07 times the 1,330 and we multiply that out, we get 93.1. And then finally for the other is 55%. So when we take our 0 0.55 times the 1,330, we get 731.5. So those are the ways that you go through and you calculate the expected. Now for each of these numbers, we're going to take the observed number minus the expected number, get that difference and square it, and once we have that value, we're going to divide it by the expected for that category. So when we take 324 minus 332.5, get our value and square it, and then divide by 332.5, you'll get 0 0.217293. When you take 165 minus the 172.9, quantity square, divide by 172.9, you'll get 0 0.360960. When we take our 100 minus the 93.1, quantity square it, and divide by 93.1, you'll get 0 0.5113856. And for the last category, when we take our 741, subtract our 731.5, quantity square it, and divide by 731.5, you get 0 0.1233766. So those are our values for observed minus expected quantity squared divided by expected. To get our test statistic, what we do is we just add that column up. And when we add all these numbers together, we get 1.213. 0, 1, 5, 2. So our test statistic you get is chi squared equal to add up all of those values of the observed minus expected quantity squared divided by expected. So that's the formula for it and we did all the work for it in the table. So when we look at that number we get our number is the 1.2130152. Now next what we want to do is we want to place our test statistic on the sketch that we've made for the distribution that has our critical value denoted. This is the chi-square distribution that we're going to go to and with the chi-square distribution you have your degrees of freedom that you need to look up and remember the chi-square distribution is skewed. So I've already written here for the critical value for the chi-squared table, you want to look with your degrees of freedom being the number of categories minus one. In this problem we had robins, we had finches, we had blue jays, and we had other. So we had four categories, so four minus one gave me a degrees of freedom equal to three. So when you looked at the chi-squared chart, with the level of significance being 0.05 and the degrees of freedom being 3, you should see on there a critical value of 7.815. Now remember, if you compare your test statistic with your critical value, you're working along a number line. 
So when we're play, placing our test statistic with regards to the critical value, 1.2130152 is smaller than 7.815, so it'll be to the left of it on the number line. And so it's open, it's under the open area, so it's under the area where you cannot reject the null. We would need to have a test statistic that would come out under the shaded region to say that we would be able to reject the null. But here it's under the open area, so we cannot reject the null. So with this, at a 5% level of significance, we cannot reject the null. So the data is not significant for us to say that the distribution um, has changed.